Hi, my name is Olivia Child, and today I'll be talking about how a horse's conformation can affect its quality of movement and long-term structural health. To start off with, we can consider what the ideal horse is. When we're judging horses in a show ring, we want those with a long, free-flowing stride and soft movement on the ground. We often talk about form to function, which is essentially how a horse's conformation affects its way of going and how it contributes to its purpose. We also look at structural correctness because we want to prevent any excess stress on the joints as well as the tendons, ligaments, and bones surrounding them. This can help us avoid future lameness and blemishes. When we look at the ideal front legs, they are straight all the way through with strong pasterns and knees and they have a laid back sloping shoulder. The ideal hind legs are also straight with a proper angle to the stifle and the hock and again, the pasterns should be strong. We'll consider all of these more in depth. Throughout this presentation, we'll be looking at various different angles in the body, as a few examples are shown here, and we'll be considering conformation and correctness. As you can see here, there are many different faults that, that can occur when we're considering conformation. To start off with, we'll be looking at the shoulder of the horse, which we can see here. This is the scapula of the horse, or shoulder blade. When we consider the shoulder, we often talk about the angle of the shoulder, which for the purpose of this presentation will be defined as the angle between the shoulder blade and a perpendicular line running straight down through the horse's leg. So as you can see here, the angle to the shoulder is the angle formed here. Considering quality of movement, when we look at the shoulder, typically a more laid back shoulder allows for more extension of the front legs. As you can imagine, a horse with a laid back shoulder like this will be more able to extend its front legs farther forward following the line. A horse that has a more steep upright shoulder will have a shorter stride because its front legs can't reach as far forward. If its shoulder is too upright or steep, this leads to a short stride which can be jarring and uncomfortable for the rider and not desirable in a show ring. Considering structural health, a steep shoulder also contributes to more weight and concussion on the front end of the horse, and this can lead to future lameness through many of the joints in the front legs. Moving down the front leg, we can talk now about the knee. The knee adds to quality of movement because straightness through the knee contributes directly to straightness of line of travel, which we can see here. A is the ideal horse whose toes point directly forwards and it tracks in a straight line. B is a horse that toes out, or its toes point outward from the middle of its body. This horse will often wing in while traveling, and this defect can come directly from the knee not being straight. On the other end of the spectrum, we have a horse that toes in and will wing out when traveling. As you can see, this horse's toes point inward towards the center line, and it will move its hooves outward in a winging out motion. Additionally, the knee may add to the knee action of the horse, which we can see here. In some breeds, it's desirable to have these very lifted, square knees in the show ring. And if the knee is not structurally correct, that can affect the ability of the horse to have this knee action. When we consider structural health, faults of the knee, meaning the knee is not straight, can put excess stress on the legs. Examples include bench knees, which can lead to splints, or calf knees, which increase the risk of arthritis in the knee. Both of these will be seen in the next slide. Here are some faults of the knee when viewed from the profile. The orange areas show the stress that is put on the legs as a result of each defect. And here are some faults from the front view. One of the examples we discussed was bench knees, which we can see here. The stress put on the legs here are on the inside of the legs, and splints can form here easily. This is because the cannons do not directly line up with the knee. As you can see, they're somewhat offset to the outside. Now we can consider the pastern. The pastern contributes to quality of movement because a more sloping pastern can make for softer movement. This means that more shock is absorbed. But if the pastern has too much slope, 
or in other words, the pasterns are long, this can lead to the horse running down, which means it hits its pasterns on the ground during motion, and it can actually lead to injuries. Leading in then to structural health, if the pastern is too upright, it can cause concussion on the fetlock, pastern, and navicular bone. All of these can lead to arthritis, ring bone, and navicular syndrome. In essence, if the pastern is too upright, it puts strain on the bony column. But if the pastern is too long or too sloping, this means the pastern is weak, and this puts more stress on the soft tissues, such as tendons and ligaments, and it can also hurt the sesamoid bones that are in the pastern. Here we can see the stress that's put on the pasterns as a result of each defect. In the middle, we have a pastern that is too long or too sloping, and the stress is put mainly on tendons and ligaments throughout this area. Additionally, you can see how the pastern may hit the ground during movement. If the pastern is too upright, most of the pain will be felt in the bony column, so the bones around here and around here in the joints. Now moving on to the stifle in the hind leg, which we can see is the point where the femur and the tibia meet. The stifle is right here, and we'll consider the angle between the femur and the tibia. When it comes to quality of movement, stride length is strongly related to stifle angle. If a stifle is too upright, meaning this angle is too large, or the horse is post-legged, they'll often have a short, choppy stride, which is uncomfortable and undesirable. In terms of structural health, if a horse has an upright or post-legged stifle, they're actually at a higher risk of locking their stifles, which is when they dislocate their patella or the kneecap, and the stifle is actually locked in place in a straight formation. Additionally, if a horse has an upright stifle, they'll have a more concussive stride, which can stress the bones and joints of the lower legs and feet. Moving down the hind leg to the hock, the hock contributes to quality of movement similarly to the stifle. Again, hock angle is strongly related to stride length, just as stifle angle was. If a horse is post-legged through its hocks, meaning its hocks are too straight or it has a large hock angle, they will again have a short, choppy stride, which is uncomfortable and undesirable. However, if they have a small hock angle, meaning they're sickle hocked, this will lead to more joint flexion, which can affect both the bones and the soft tissues around the joints. However, this can actually be beneficial in terms of quality of movement for some horses. For example, reining horses have to bend their hocks and sit down on their haunches during sliding stops. And as a result, many reining horses are actually somewhat sickle hocked. And again, similarly to the knee, the straightness through the hock contributes to the straightness of line of travel. When we consider structural health, a horse that's more post-legged will have more concussion through the bony column, which can lead to many different degenerative joint diseases. On the opposite side, sickle hocked horses are more prone to curb, bone spavin, or bog spavin, all of which can be lamenesses or blemishes of the hock. Here we can see various different views of the hock and showing both ideal and some faults. Some of what we considered are the straight, posty legged horse, meaning the hock has too much angle, and the sickle hocked horse, which has too small of an angle to the hock. Additionally, we can look at the hind view where horses may be bow hocked, meaning their hocks fall outside of a plumb line, or cow hocked, where their hocks point inward. All of these faults can contribute to different strains on the bones, the joints, and the ligaments and tendons. So in conclusion, after looking at all these parts of the horse and how they contribute to, to quality of movement and structural health, it's clear that confirmation has vast effects on both quality of movement and structural health. As a result, horses should be carefully evaluated, whether it's for breeding, showing, purchase, etc. You should always try to find the closest to ideal confirmation in order to get the best potential results. Thank you for listening to this presentation. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new.